what's good it's your boy young taz and i'm back with another video today i'm gonna review episode six of chucky and before i get started you want to uh support young and toxic you know help a brother out check out my website all young and toxic merch now you want a hoodie it's getting cold as fuck outside but anyway the episode starts off in charleston south carolina and we get a rinkity dink ass car yeah, this is definitely from like the 80s or 90s or whatever. It's an old car, bro. But yeah, um, get this old ass car and we see these two people get out of it. They got guns. You know, some shit's about to go down. I'm assuming that they're the FBI or some shit. They walk to this house, knock on the door, this dude answers, and they say they're from the census bro. And these people look pretty familiar. If you didn't know, this is actually Andy Barkley from Child's Play 1, 2, and 3. And from i think he was in curse of chucky or maybe it was call of chucky and we got cow but they're asking questions about you know how many people live here and but then the questions get a little weird they start asking has there any been has there been any property damage lately or have they seen a doll crazy shit or has it been any unexpected murders so they ask um the little girl does she have any dolls like they saying it's some new shit like they're uh trying to get the kids informed about the census some bullshit so the girl brings her dolls down and they ask if she has any other dolls and she's like oh yeah i forgot my best friend so she brings down a chucky doll well you know a good guy doll and he says hi my name's charles so very it, it it just gave it away like brad chucky you should try it harder i come to find out this is uh the chucky doll from uh curse of chucky that was fucking with nika the same as act one but yeah he starts talking and he pulls out his doohickey blows chucky's head off and cow and andy they load chucky up brad they they murked this nigga. They killed him, bruh. But anyway, they got the fuck out of there. They was playing no games. Then we get to the title card uh, intro, and bruh, these title cards just get better and better every week. This one's made out of glass. Very fitting for this episode. And we got, later on at night, Andy and Kyle driving, and they're conversating, reminiscing about the past and shit. Pretty much, you know, saying, you know, they got to find the last uh, Chucky doll. Um, Well, yeah, there's one more doll, but Kyle didn't know that Chucky's actually in somebody's body. Um, Andy didn't express that to her, though, but I'm pretty sure she's going to find out later. What's crazy about this conversation with Andy and Kyle is like you could tell that Chucky had a big effect on Andy's life while Kyle was able to move on with her life and like find a husband and you know just be happy so it's crazy the parallels we cut to the next scene they're in science class and it's crazy they're always in fucking science class like is this the only class they take like bruh they, with no math class no art class no PE no social studies or history like not even band class or nothing like that like what the fuck but yeah, uh, Devin Mom's busting, and she says that Science Bay is <sighs> the prime suspect for all these murders that's going down. So they're about to take her down for an investigation. And moment of silence for uh, Science Bay. I'm a, I'm a hold it down for you on the streets, babe. I got you. But um, Lexi runs out and tries to tell uh, Devin's mom that hey. Uh, you know, she didn't do it. But, you know, adults in Chucky shows and movies, you know, you can't just tell them that it's a fucking Chucky doll. And then by the time they find out it's a doll, they're going to fucking get killed. So it's like pointless. Lexi and the gang all decide to go to Lexi's house, uh, you know, later on and uh, discuss and uh, see if they can um, find help. They suggest uh, trying to find Andy and that's going to pop up later on. Because the next scene, we're at the hotel in present time, and we got uh, 
Tiffany and Nika in a hotel room, and Tiffany's trying to stuff a body in a, a suitcase. You know, that's that's kind of her thing. She normally tries to s- stuff bodies and shit. But um, she trying to get this body in, and it's not trying to fit. Chucky comes over, makes a joke about it. You know, like, hey, this is normally your specialty. Like, what the fuck? So... Tiffany gets upset and chops the guy's arms off. And Nika sees the blood and immediately comes back. So this is interesting about, like, Chucky inside of Nika's body. How efficient could this really be? Because it seems like every time she sees blood, she's going to snap back. Like, that pretty much makes, you know, this version of Chucky useless. Cut to Hackensack, uh, 1987. And side note, I would love to see this version of Tiffany and Chucky, you know, have their own little spinoff show or movie or something. I would love to see, like, the origins of them. Like, it could be something like Bride to Be or some shit like that. But, yeah, they're buying this car from this dude. And he was saying that... You know, it's funny that a couple just got murdered a couple days ago in this car. So it makes it seem like, you know, Chucky must have seen that couple and then decided to, like, get the car or whatever. So the dude says, you know, it's a classic. And Chucky kind of gets offended. Like, it's not a classic. It's just a fucking car. Like, it's, you know, it's not pretty much saying it's from this year or, like, a couple years ago, pretty much. So... Tiffany, you know, gets behind the dude and slices his fucking throat. And it's funny that while the dude has his fucking throat slit, he's still saying, uh, would you uh, do a thousand? Like, he's still trying to sell the fucking car. Like, bro, they're obviously about to take the fucking car. So they get in the car. Pretty much, Chucky pulls out this fucking voodoo book. This is probably, like, the first time. He got into this shit, like, you know, leading up to when he, uh, you know, got killed or got shot and then transferred his body into Chucky's at the uh, Good Guy Doll uh, warehouse. Think him a jig it. All right. But anyway, they drive off and they're leaving Arkansas. So I guess this would be like when they first moved to Chicago. Like, right before Chucky got killed. Cut to the next scene. We got Logan hugging Bree. And it's obviously Bree told Logan that she has cancer. And they call Junior in. Bree sits him down, tells him. And uh, this is, you know, I've, I've grown to love these characters. It's crazy. Like, I love the way they built, you know, their character and personality and so much like in so short of a time it's crazy but junior breaks down then we cut to the next scene next we cut to nika and tiffany nika's pretending to be chucky but tiffany's like on to her because there's some things that chucky do that you know tiffany knows you know she knows chucky inside and out so nick nika tries to like play along she barely wins this poker game that they're playing. And in real life, Tiffany's like real good at poker. So Tiffany asks um, Chucky about their honeymoon. And Chucky's like, oh, you know, pretty much, I, you know, I can't remember. It's been so long ago. <laughs> Chucky normally loves to reminisce about shit, too, if you notice about Chucky. But uh, Tiffany's like, hey, Nika. And Nika's like, I'm not Nika. I'm not Nika. What do you mean? Why would you think that? You're like, um, well, I stabbed you in your leg like 10 minutes ago. And if you were Chucky, you would have screamed. But, you know, since your parents believed it, you know, you didn't feel it. And Chucky doesn't bite his nails. But funny thing. Tiffany actually wants Nika to take control of her body. Like, she's kind of sick of Chucky. And it's crazy, like, after they spend so much time with each other, Tiffany and Chucky normally, like, wants to kill each other. 
Like, they can't be around each other for too long. And I'm pretty sure they've been together for, like, at least 20 years straight now. The, uh, Tiffany hits Nika in the back of the head with a pan to knock her out. Then we cut to the next scene. The kids are at Lexi's house, and they're about to call Andy. Lexi walks off to talk to Junior, and he's like, he just feels like he's alone. He doesn't have anybody. And Lexi's not really paying attention. She's too focused on Jake and Devin, like what they're doing with Chucky. So I don't know where Junior's just like, you know what? I'm done. I can't do this no more. I'm breaking up. And Lexi's like heartbroken. Jake and Devin talks to Andy and Andy's pretty much giving them tips and tricks, you know, about Chucky and telling them that, you know, they're on the way there. It's going to be a minute to get from uh, Virginia all the way to fucking Hackensack, New Jersey. It's going to take a minute. But Andy and Kyle's like, you know, just be safe. We'll be there soon. Cut to the next scene. Uh, Tiffany was telling Nika that she purchased them a house. This is actually Chucky's childhood house. And she meets with the lady that bit into that apple on Halloween, you know, that Chucky gave her. Uh, she's a realtor for the house. So she told her, like, um, what made her want to get the house. And she was like, well, my fiance grew up here. And the realtor was like, oh, that's crazy because the last people that was here was murdered. And Tiffany was like, yeah, I know. It's my in-laws. So the lady kind of like, okay, well, uh, oh, anyway, I got this package for you. So she gives her this package. I'm pretty sure it's a Chucky doll. I mean, what else could it be? Tiffany opens the truck, and Nika's in the truck. And she brings Nika into the house. And you can see that Nika is just terrified. She really doesn't know what to expect from Tiffany, let alone Chucky. Uh, Tiffany leaves out and leaves Nika in the house by herself. Cut to the next scene. We got science teacher Bay, free Bay. She shouldn't be in this position, but it's cool. We we know we know it's going. She gonna get out soon. But Devin's mom interrogating her, but she ain't saying shit. That's right, Bay. Stay strong. Don't tell these op ass motherfuckers nothing. Devin's mom is like, we got we know. You know, we got your fingerprints all over school, and we know that you were next in line to get the principal's job. So we know you did the principal. We know we know you killed the principal, and we don't want to talk about your troubled high school past. But science teacher, babe, she ain't saying shit. She just like, I'm gonna get my lawyer. Cut to the next scene. Junior uh, rides with his mom, Bree to her therapy session and you know they have a little moment and he's like what do they talk about and Bree's like well most of the time we just talk about you or talk about stuff that we don't talk about at home and they kind of share a little heart to heart moment Bree's telling her therapist that she's decided not to take treatments and let the illness run its course she don't want to take Logan and Junior through all the unnecessary stress and she's very brave for deciding that. Kudos to Brie. Her character really grew on me. I just wish that they made it so she was cheating, like they insinuated it. I would have liked that story better. But Logan texts her, and she was about to text um, that she decided not to take the treatment. But she decided to erase that text. Brie walks over to look at the window, and we see Chucky with a fucking cart behind her he pushes a cart and this part just broke my heart man he pushed her out the window Bree didn't have to die guys she didn't have to die she was already dying like come on man but this is show that th nobody's safe in this show like anything can happen anybody could die at any moment like after seeing this i feel like nobody's safe like the kids could die next anybody's parents could die like Junior hears, you know, some noise. I guess the cart falling. And he turns around and splash. Bree goes right through the windshield. Like, bruh. 
Junior hops out the car and he's just mortified. He just, I mean, how would you be if that was your mom? Cut to the next scene. The therapist at the house and she's like, she decided not to take the treatment, but maybe, you know, in the last minute, she just decided to take the power for herself. You know, most people that go through stuff like this, you know, take want to take control of the situation so but maybe she committed suicide and do that logan's like man fuck all that you she was supposed to be going to you to get help and she leaves your building and out the window so the therapist is like understand it's a y'all y'all know y'all upset you know just let me know if you guys want to talk i'm not paying you shit I'm not about to start no therapy sessions. My wife went to you for help, and she died. You're getting a bad review on you. Cut to the next scene. Devin's watching Cape Fear in his room. His mom walks in, talks to him. Kind of, you know, she's feels better about Jake since, you know, all the murders are kind of tied up with the principal. I mean, the science teacher. No, she um leaves out. What well, come? What well, she didn't leave out. Devin asks her a question like, "How do you know if you like somebody?" So she is like, "Well, you like somebody. You think about them all the time, and every time you think about them, you get butterflies in your stomach." And she was like, "Is that how you feel about Jake?" And Devin nodded. So this definitely confirms Devin has feelings for Jake, and Devin's mom. I love her. I love her now. She was getting on my nerves at first, but I love her now. Um, don't tell a science teacher though. But yeah, she embraces Devin. Devin was like he didn't want to tell her because he felt like he he thought she wouldn't have thought of him the same. But she was like, You're my son, you know. I'll never stop loving you. So he was finished watching Cape Fear and he gets some little tips and tricks on how to, you know, take out Chucky. He reaches under his bed to find this box with a taser in it. You might want to charge that taser. You're going to need a full voltage, bro. One of the things I really love about this show is that every episode, they're kind of inspired by another horror movie. And it's like, this is inspired by Cape Fear, obviously, when they're doing their little shutters and shit like that. Pretty dope. This show put a lot into it. So they're like wrapping wire around door handles and shit and window sills and attaching it to this doll so if chucky tries to break in the doll will move and they'll know exactly where he's at lexi goes upstairs to see if you know chucky might be coming in upstairs Devin and jake talk about you know maybe after all of this is over they can go on a date or whatever Devin tells Jake that he told his mom that, you know, they're a couple now. And he tells him that his mom was very, you know, supportive. And, and she likes Jake now that she knows that he's not a serial killer. And then they notice the doll moves. Devin and Jake do some investigating around the house. And a fucking lamp falls down. Obviously, it's Chucky. They look around and see his footprints coming from the chimney, you know, a little nod to Child's Play 1. You can see Chucky still creeping around while they're looking around for him. Um, Then the lights cut off. Devin and Jake head upstairs while Chucky is in the room that Lexi's in, and he's trying to convince her to kill Jake, and he'll let her go. And she's kind of like, you know, stringing him along the so Jake can pop up behind Chucky. And this part should have been done a little better. Like Jake should have been able to bash Chucky's head open with that bat. But no, Chucky slips through Jake's legs and cut his leg and then he's out the room. Devin catches him, tases him, and this part was funny because Chucky went flying. Chucky gets up and he's like, I'm too old for this shit. And Devin's about to tase him again, but the taser's dead. Like I said, why the fuck didn't you charge the taser? But Chucky runs out of there and he doesn't kill Devin though. Even though he could have. 
And Lexi agree says the same thing. Like he didn't kill her. Like he could have. So they're going around looking for him again. Devin's mom's pop in and she's like, Hey Devin, where the fuck are you? And Chucky pops up on her like, Hey Devin, look at this. Watch me. Jumps on the back of her head and she's like, Oh fuck. And he makes her tumble down the stairs. And when I seen this part, I was just like, bruh, what the fuck? He makes her tremble all the way down the stairs and she breaks her fucking neck. And damn, Chucky killed Bree and Devin's mom. The kids run down the steps to see if she was okay, but it's too late. She's gone. And that's how this episode ends. Chucky escapes in the night. Just like, fuck, man. Fuck. Like I was saying, nobody's safe in this show. Like, I feel like one of the kids is going to get killed next. Like, it, it has to be. It can't just be all kids. Like, one of the kids got to, somebody got to die. I feel like Jake might be the, the lone survivor. Devin might get killed. Lexi might get killed. Even Junior might get killed. Like, it's no holds bar. And in my opinion, I would probably give this episode a 9 out of 10. It's a pretty good episode. But anyway, if you like the video, please like, subscribe, and thanks for watching. Oh, yeah, and uh, check out my website. Don't forget to hit up my website for some Young and Toxic merch. Peace!